found that interesting though that we actually sang that song this morning i had i knew i think wednesday that they were doing that but i had already had part of my message done um i think tuesday wednesday and so i told blake i was like hey man i need you to swap some songs around because i want that one last and I don't think it was by coincidence because recently we've, we've been in a drought, right? I mean, it's, it's been pretty dry. It almost kind of feels, oh, it's probably been like over a month maybe. Feels like it's been over a month. If it hasn't, then felt like it. But the rain has been scarce lately. Like, very scarce and I remember last week I think it was last week or a week before last um, I was leaving work and when I walked outside there was like these huge raindrops and, I, and I, I was on the phone with Holly I was like Holly I have no idea what this substance is falling from the sky <laughs> what is this <laughs> it hurts <laughs> You know, like, especially like when you're out on the lake, right? When you're, when you're out on the lake and it starts pouring down rain, it, it's, it's the worst feeling ever. Is it not the worst feeling ever? It, it's, it's terrible. I'm looking at y'all because I know y'all are like, all, like, I always see pictures on the lake. <laughs> I remember, uh, gosh, it's probably been about two or three months ago. We were out riding around on the pontoon and, uh, and we came around, we were coming like from the dam area back towards Duncan Bridge. And we were probably like around in the Curry area. And it was like the last like kind of turn before you get all the way down to where you turn right to go to the dam or to the Duncan Bridge. And I remembered um, looking like ahead of us. And I was like, it's about to pour on us. This is going to be terrible. And we were coming from Rock Creek, actually. Now I remember. But we were at Rock Creek. I was like, it looks like it's raining, like, back towards the bridge. It was. It was terrible. <laughs> I was like, okay, so we got, like, six kids on this boat. There's, like, three or four adults, and this is about to hurt. So I was like, oh, maybe I can put the little top over us, and, and it'll be okay. Well, the top doesn't keep rain from coming at your face. <laughs> It only stops what's coming down on you. So the rain, like, I mean, it was like those, like, pellet size where, like, somebody's, like, throwing a rock at you. That's about what it felt like, except a thousand times over. And, and so I think it was, like, Alex and Brian, maybe. I think they were with us. I think. I can't really remember who was with us, but they were, they like had towels and they were like trying to sh uh, shield the kids from getting hit. And like everybody's screaming and I'm screaming because I'm getting pounded in the face with, with rain and I can't see. And I borrowed somebody's sunglasses just so I could keep the rain out of my eyes. And then I couldn't see then because it wasn't bright outside. So it's like, okay, well, I don't really know what I'm doing at this point. Um, so I think there was like actually one point where we stopped. It was like, okay, well, maybe it won't hurt so bad if we just stop in the middle of the lake. Oh, great. Now it's lightning. <laughs> the worst situation ever. I never want to do that again. I refuse to go on the lake anymore. I sold the boat. I'm just kidding. I didn't. That day I wanted to. <laughs> it was horrible. But I say all that just because like now I look back and I'm kind of like, man, I wish we had like some of that rain because it's been like really dry lately. And I think like there was a time, maybe they even said it was like a, what are they, it was like some fire hazard or whatever, where, like where you can't burn stuff. Like they don't, I don't know the technical term, but you can't burn anything. That's it. So, but the thing about, like, the drought that we've been in and everything is the fact that it's very harmful. It's harmful for, for vegetation. It's harmful for farms. It's harmful for grass. You know, it's, I think if you go around looking at all the yards and stuff, most of them probably look like you're in the middle of winter right now. 
or that might just be mine because I don't do anything with it. I don't know. <laughs> or a mixture of both. I know I haven't had to cut grass in about a month, so that's good because I hate cutting grass. <laughs> but when it doesn't rain, it's harmful. The grass can't grow. The grass dies. Trees die. Plants die. And in order for those things to live, you have to have some sort of water, right? You have to have, it. not only does it need sunlight, but it's also got to have water. Genesis chapter 6. And so this is actually going back to, um, back to when Noah built the ark. I remember like, man, we're like going to do like a Sunday school lesson, kind of. But when Noah built the ark, you know, it was because God told him, you know, I'm, I'm about to flood this place, right? So <laughs> they had no concern about any drought whatsoever at that point. This also reminds me of the movie Evan Almighty. <laughs> just because everybody thought that dude was just crazy because he was, they were, he was building an ark in the middle of his front yard and people were like, what is this cat daddy doing? It's like, why is he building an ark in the middle of his front yard? It's because, he, because God kept giving him signs, you know, there's going to be a flood. And like, what would people think of you if you started building an ark in your front yard? But reading this like made me think of that. But anyway, so Genesis chapter 6, verse 11 through 13. It says, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, and all the people on the earth had corrupt their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both of them and the earth. So, but God didn't want to destroy everything, right? God wanted to destroy everything but Noah and some of Noah's family and then obviously like two of every kind of animal. And the reason why he didn't want to destroy Noah is because he found because Noah found favor in God. But you're you're probably wondering like like what do these two things have to do together? See, I think when when the corruption was going on, there was a drought. Maybe not physically, but there was a drought spiritually. We often talk about the flood and Noah building an ark, but we never really talk about why there was ever an ark or ever needing to be a flood. We always, you know, we have the Sunday school lessons where we create this little character figure, man, that's always smiling next to this boat that portrays an ark. but we never talk about why Noah had to build that ark. In Genesis chapter six, verse five through seven. It said, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the earth race or the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time, not sometimes, all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth creatures that move along the ground for I regret that I have made them. Could you imagine living in a day where the Lord regretted ever making you. I think the thing is, is like, there was so much perversion and so much corruption that there was really like no other form, no other way for God to really hit the reset button other than to just wipe it all out except for this one guy and his family that found favor in him. Because again, I think all this had to do with the fact that there was this spiritual drought going on. We've seen a physical drought. 
these people were dealing with a spiritual drought. There was a lack of rain. And people were doing what they thought was best for their lives and people were doing what they thought was best for them to live and best for them to survive and and really just probably not even what was best for them. They were probably just doing whatever they wanted. I mean, it's with no rules, no boundaries, no no anything. They They were out killing each other. It kind of sounds similar to today. But we do know that God's not going to flood us all. He's already promised that. People were being disobedient to the point where God was in the regret of even creating them because of everything that they did. Now when I do something wrong, God shows grace. He doesn't really show regret towards me. But see, when when God did bring the rain at that point in time, it was like God was hitting a reset button. It was like God was saying, I'm going to redo what creation was, what creation should have been to begin with. He was basically renewing a creation, kind of like there was like a refreshing of the world itself. Yesterday, when it rained for a few hours, I got to thinking about like, I got to thinking about how much life was starting to be given because of the fact that it was raining. I started thinking about, you know, how things that looked like that they were dying started becoming back to life. How even with these people, how human nature, how mankind actually started becoming back to what God intended it to be, what God created it to be, basically allowing these people that were saved from this to start over, to have a refreshing of what God really wants. Just like these plants, the, the, the grass, I remember, like, so yesterday when it was raining, I was sitting there thinking, this is like a renewing of what we haven't had in a long time, where we've had a drought physically in a long time. Now we're getting something that is needed to where these things can begin to live again. And the reason why I put these two things together, the reason why I use this as an analysis is because the fact that it's basically like our lives. We get in spiritual droughts, right? So four of you are telling the truth. (laughs) And the rest of you know that it's true. (laughs) But what was dying yesterday was beginning to get one of the most important things that it needed to live. I was watching this show on Netflix that, that Rylan likes to watch. It's Planet Earth. This, I, used to, I, I was never into this like geographical stuff where stuff happens. What I don't know. But she watches like this crazy stuff on there. I'm like, okay, well, at least this is what you're watching. But she watches like how kind of like the cycle of, of like animals and stuff kind of live. And we were watching uh, Planet Ocean where it like shows these whales and like all these coral and, and these fish and snakes and stuff. And like how they like basically how they live. And so I was watching this one with her that was with the deserts. And this was like really interesting to me because... It actually started like speaking to me because it was like some of the driest places in the world. They're like nothing but sand and I don't even really know how cactuses live in this stuff. It's insane. But 
it's like nothing but sand, but yet over a couple of days, if it rains like just a little bit, in a couple of days, like what was sand and what was dead then becomes the life. And it becomes like nothing but like this big green, like nothing but full of vegetation and full of trees. And I got to thinking, I was like, how many times do we live like this exact life where we go through this long period of time where we feel completely dead and completely dried up, but then when there's a flood, when there's a rain, then we start to, then we start to flourish, then we start to grow. And I got to thinking about that. I was like, man, I was like, I can remember like growing up how many times I felt like that I was like really messing life up. (laughs) Now I feel even more like I do sometimes than I used to. but, But sometimes we go through those cycles where we feel like that we just can't get anything right and nothing is going right for us. And we're in the driest parts of our lives that we feel like that we could ever be in until God rains on us. And that's the biggest thing with this song that that really hit me was when we are in here and we declare for God to let it rain on us, how our lives can actually change and how much life we can actually get when God does rain on us. The, The thing was, is like just how the vegetation started growing like out of nowhere and it like kind of does this like transformation thing where it shows you like where the where it's like sand and then like in a matter of like two or three seconds it starts like showing you like the grass growing and everything. It was really cool. I would suggest watching it if you want to see it, but it was it was cool to me. And I don't even like stuff like that. But I said all that to say this. that we go through spiritual droughts and we go through times where we need God to reign in our lives. And I don't necessarily mean rain as in God taking over our lives. I mean where we need like this hardcore come to Jesus meeting where God is reigning on us, where God is pouring out his spirit on us because I can tell you numerous days where had God not done that, then life would be meaningless. Because some days we face things that, that feel like they're the dead end and they're the, they're the end of the road for our lives. And there's days that we feel like that, that we hit a brick wall, I guess you could say. But then there's times where when we get to that point in our lives where God is basically telling us at this point when you have to start relying on me. At this point, when you start hitting these points in your life, this is when you really have to start relying on God. Because there's a lot of times where we'll face things in life where the only way that we're going to recover, the only way that we're going to get out of it is to rely on God. we get in these spiritual droughts. There are some of us here today that, that have probably been in a spiritual drought over the last couple of days, over the last couple of weeks, over the last couple of months. There are some of us here this morning that probably have been in a spiritual drought over the last couple of years. We've tried to do things our way. We've been in the driest times of our lives where we have actually felt no life. We've probably even encountered people that feel these ways. We've been in a valley feeling troubled where life didn't make sense anymore. Struggles where we have, where that, that we've been enduring for 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 a long time, like just not being able to get out of. We've been consumed with our issues, our problems, the things that keep us up at night, the ghosts that we, that we hide that, that not everybody sees that, 
that we have in our closets. We continue to deal with these things. Things that we can't get off of our minds, things that, that keep us drugged down. And I'm speaking from, from experience, not just because some book told me that this is what people go through. And I think everybody in here could probably relate to some of this stuff because, I mean, it's everyday life sometimes. Y'all stand. We may feel like David did in Psalms chapter 13. He says, how long, Lord? First of all, without anything else ever being said about this, I think this one statement, this one question could probably be the question that we ask a lot of times in our lives is, Lord, how long am I going to deal with this? Lord, how long? How long do I have to go without, without feeling you near me? How long do I have to go with dealing with, uh, dealing with anything that's going on in our lives, God? Because you would be able to list numerous things that, that you're going through personally. And you would probably be able to ask that same exact question for those things that you go through is, Lord, how long am I going to deal with X, Y, Z? And then his next question is, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? This is considered one of the deepest, darkest times that David went through. How long will my mind not be at rest? How long will these things haunt me? How long will, how long is it going to take before you actually do something, God? God, I feel like I'm in a drought. I feel like I can't even talk to you. I feel like I'm, I'm hitting a brick wall and nothing's getting through to you. Look on me and answer, Lord my God. David is like crying out at this point, wanting an answer from God for what he's dealing with. How many times have we actually got to a place where we have cried out to God, wanting an answer for something? Or do we just think, okay, well, maybe if I just pray about it and just say, well, Lord, I just want you to take care of this. Yes, I think he can do it because you ask. But at what extent are you willing to go to get it? At what extent are you willing to, to lay on your face in your bedroom and cry out to God and really intercede for what you're wanting? Are you willing to lay in your bedroom floor on your face crying out, wanting your thoughts to quit wrestling with you? Are you willing to... to 100% give up your fight and what you're trying to do with it.
give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. See, there's gonna be people who think that they, that they have defeated us. There's gonna be people waiting for you to fall. It's gonna happen throughout all of life. And when you do fall, they will probably rejoice. They will probably be happy that you fell in life. But the best part is the next part where David says, but I trust in your unfailing love. Regardless of everything that's going on in my mind, regardless of everything that's going on, that, that, that's going on in my, in, in my thoughts, in my everyday life, I'm still going to trust in your unfailing love. Because my heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. Out of everything that you deal with, heads bowed, out of everything that you deal with, out of everything that's going on in your mind, out of everything that you're troubled with, out of everything that, that you've been struggling with, that, you've, that you feel like that you've been defeated with, know that God's salvation is still there and God's salvation is still good. Know that God has an unfailing love for you. Because when you get to that point is when God will rain on you. Let it rain, God. We thank you. Let it rain. Lord, give us the rain this morning. Let it rain. Open the God, flood out everything that's been giving us troubles over the last couple of weeks, God, over the last couple of days, over the for the last couple of months, God. God, I pray this morning, God, that you would flood those things out and that you would make a new creation in us this morning, Father. If you've been dealing with these things, if, you, if you've been in a spiritual drought, if you need God to rain on you, you need God to answer these prayers that you've, that you've been struggling with, that you've been dealing with, I want you to raise your hand. Numerous people. 